Hey y'all, Coach and Fight here. Guys, stay see with me. Shalom. And in this class, we're going to be talking about what's wrong with Halloween. Okay. What's wrong with celebrating Halloween? Mm -hmm. What's the problem with it? Right. You know, we often hear this. People say, you know, that we are taken away from the kids and we did it when we were kids and so you know what's the problem with doing it now and all it is yeah we're all right you know they say that you turned out all right what well, why are you denying your children and you know after all we like candy too you know we love those candy corn <laughs> <laughs> yeah and in this video what we're going to do is we're going to look at what the bible says about celebrating halloween and other holidays we're going to talk about what it does to you, what effect it has on you when you celebrate Halloween and the, and the other holidays. OK, we're going to talk about why it falls in that particular time of the year. And we're also going to talk about why it's so important for our governments. You know, you have Halloween parties down at the White House every year. Mm. And so we'll be talking about why it's so important in this video. Oh, I did not know that. They had a, I know they had an Easter party, but I did not know they had a Halloween. Yeah, I believe they have one for each of the holidays, Christmas parties and everything down at the White House. Basically getting the whole country involved in that festival. Right. And we'll see why that is in this video. So stick around to the end. It should be packed with a lot of information, a lot of which you probably haven't heard before. Yeah, I think this would be a great class, especially for, um, the younger mothers as well as mothers um, that fall within our age group who um, have grandchildren yeah. and they can teach them and show them the truth you know we want us want our children to um, know and understand the truth about these things so I think this should be a great class for everyone yeah we'll be talking about that too why the focus is on the children during these holidays but right. anyway let's go ahead and get started okay now, the first thing we need to understand is that there are gods associated with these holidays. Each one of these holidays, as we know them, is actually pertains to a particular God. Mm -hmm. like we have, we call them stuff like Christmas, or we call them Halloween, or other names we give them. But when you look at the origins of them, they all fall around these particular gods. Right. So we can get really quickly to the problem when over in the covenant, in the Ten Commandments, no doubt, the very first commandment says, thou shalt have no other God before me. Right. Now, does that verse make sense? Yes, it does. Uh, it's a very common verse, um, and it's in the Ten Commandments. Yeah, but notice that word before me. Does it really make sense that he's saying that you should have no other gods before him as if it's OK to have gods as long as you don't put them ahead of him? Right. Well, when you come over to the Septuagint translation of the Bible, it says you will have no other gods beside me. OK, now that makes sense. Yeah, you have none whatsoever. He is the only creator. He is the only father. He is the only God. And so we aren't to have any other gods whatsoever. Right. Mm -hmm. And I know some people will say, you know, that's Old Testament stuff and we aren't supposed to follow the Ten Commandments. And for those guys, I bring them over to Matthew chapter four and ten. OK. Where we have our Messiah speaking. Right. And what is he telling them there? He says, then said the Messiah unto him, get thee hence, Satan, for it is written you shall worship the Lord thy God, and him only shall you serve. So here's a commandment from our Messiah saying that we will serve no other gods. Mm -hmm. We see the same thing down in Luke. So it's not just an Old Testament commandment, something that, you know, they'll claim that it's been done away with and we can do whatever we want to. He's stressing that, you know, we are to serve no other gods. Right. But the thing is, when we go in and we put the name of the God in here, like if we Google it, look what date comes up. Mm, that's a familiar date. October the 31st right. is the day we know as Halloween. Mm -hmm. Every year. That's right. And one video that I'll give you guys a reference to in the description speaks about how in the ancient times, this was really only talking about the first day of the month. Mm. 
you know, they didn't have calendars like we do now mm -hmm. back when they invented this holiday. And so that what they're saying there is just the first day of Nov or the first day of the ninth month. Okay. And I'm not going to say the name of that God. We learn over in the book of Exodus and in other places that it's important that we never speak the names of these gods. Mm -hmm. We see down here in Deuteronomy chapter 18 and verse 20 that even if the prophets were to speak the names of those other gods, they will be put to death. Right. It says there they will, that prophet shall die. But obviously that day is around or centered around that particular God, even though people don't know it. They call it All Saints Day. I've heard that date. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's kind of what uh, the name implies. Halloween or something like that refers to uh, All Saints Day or something like that. But when you look at the Catholic doctrines as to when they actually established it, they actually established it in this document here. I'm not sure how to pronounce it. But you see how they're saying that November will be the celebration of this All Saints Day. Mm -hmm. But when you go back and you look at the origins or the Greek, you see it didn't call it All Saints Day. It actually gave it by that particular name. Okay. So all of that to say that the Catholics are the ones who invented Halloween. Mm. Before then, this is the name that it went under. Right. That's what they called it. But the Catholics put a change on words in here and so now we don't recognize it as being the celebration of that day but they're still doing the same rituals associated with that day mm -hmm. now it was actually pope gregory the third that made it a christian holiday okay yeah this is why they call christianity the most polytheistic religion on the planet mm -hmm. is because Many, if not all of those ancient pagan holidays have been Christianized and they fall on the Christian calendar. Just renamed. Just renamed. So if you follow the Christian holidays, then you're actually serving or worshiping all of these particular gods. Right. Mm -hmm. At least the ones that they have days for. Right. Again, that was Pope Gregory the Third that did that. That put it on the calendar for November the 1st. Now what's interesting about that date. Is you look at when it falls on the sacred calendar. Mm -hmm. You know our calendar system is different. Right. We even have different holidays. We, we call them holy days of mm -hmm. course. But when you're looking at the recent holy day called the Feast of Tabernacles. Looking at the Matonic cycle of the schedule of new moons. We see the latest possible start for the seventh month is October the 14th. Okay. That means the latest possible start date for the Feast of Tabernacles is October the 30th. Mm. Okay. So Halloween will always start after the Feast of Tabernacles. And although this schedule is tentative, waiting on the verification of the new moon, it appears that All Saints Day will fall on Tishri 17, which corresponds to the day the ark rested, like we read about over in Genesis chapter 8. Mm -hmm. So that's why Halloween falls on that particular day. Mm. It's like if you were to celebrate the Feast of Tabernacles, not knowing the significance of that, the trick is that they're going to treat you to a pagan festival that's going to wipe all of that away. Immediately afterwards. Immediately afterwards. That, that's, in fact, how all of the holidays are. Like, for instance, we talked about Easter and how it always falls during the Feast of Unleavened Bread. At least most of the time it falls during the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Mm -hmm. It didn't in 2021. And that's why I believe we saw a shift in the spirit as a lot of people did not find themselves cursed by, you know, celebrating Easter during the middle of that high holy week. Right. But when you look at Hanukkah, the start of Hanukkah is always before Christmas. Mm -hmm. So Christmas actually stamps out Hanukkah. Mm -hmm. So it's clearly no accident that they do this. But the significant part about Halloween 
why you see it at the top of their pagan wheel, why they consider it the most important. Right. It's because of what we learn about the festival of tabernacles and how it is a time of release. Mm -hmm. So celebrating the feast of tabernacles is actually how we become human tabernacles for our father to dwell in. Right. Releasing us from our dependency on the world. Mm -hmm. Well, Halloween comes immediately after that to stamp all of that out. Right. To basically bring you back into the flow. The, the, <laughs> the back into the beast systems. Mm -hmm. And I believe that's why it's so important that they get the kids involved. Mm -hmm. What they're doing is they're having the kids to grow up keeping Halloween. Mm -hmm. So that when they're adults, they know what to do, when to do it, where to do it. They know everything about Halloween. Mm -hmm. I mean, you think about the holy festivals. Many of us are just now learning about the holy festivals. And we got millions of questions. Right. When is it? What do we do? How do we do it? Why do we do it? Everybody's got questions about the holy festivals. Mm -hmm. You've never heard anybody ask any questions about Halloween. Mm -mm. No, we know when to do it, what to do, where. Uh, let's show up early so you can get the good candy. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. And so that's the purpose of the candy, to get the kids involved so they can grow up. Repeating and, the same cycle as their parents did. And then when they become adults, they already know everything about it, like you say. Mm -hmm. And like we see over here in the book of Jeremiah in 44, they're actually keeping these festivals so that they might get themselves cut off. Mm. That's the purpose of it. That's the purpose of these pagan holidays is to separate themselves from our father, to actually create separation. It's a way of severing the connection. It's a way of severing the relationship between our father by worshiping and serving these other gods. Well, it's a very sinister plan because you're thinking that you're doing something innocent by, you know, allowing the child to dress up in these crazy costumes. Um, no matter how sinister, the more sinister they are, the better. Um, but, you know, just to get some candy. But. Behind the scenes, they've had they have a calculated plan to have you cursed and cut off from the father. Yeah, that's how our governments are able to survive. That's why they saw the Messiah as a threat to the government systems. It's because of this release by having people to keep the holy days and reject the holidays would actually disrupt the economic systems of the world. And so that's why you have holiday festivals down there with the president yeah that was going to be my next question you know um what is the purpose of them trying to have us cursed you know uh, uh, all the people not just you know israel they want everybody cursed is that so that we can continue to play this game where you know the power the powerful become more powerful and those that are not you know stay low and lowly, um, I guess, on the totem pole, you would say. It's a way of controlling society. Mm -hmm. If if they were to not, like it says there in First Kings, if they were not to provoke our father to anger, then they would actually lose control of their people. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you would end up with people out surviving on their own. People would learn mm -hmm. to start growing mm -hmm. their own food and mm -hmm. taking care of themselves with our father's help. That's one of the things he promises us is that he would help us with our everyday needs. Right. Well, our government wants to be the source or the provider of our everyday needs. So they keep us severed. And one of the ways they do so is by placing these holidays to fall right after our holy days. So even if you were to keep them on accident, like for instance, the Sabbath day, if you were to accidentally rest on a Sabbath day, well, you got Sunday coming right after that. Mm -hmm. And so that you could be down at the church or down there at the Sunday dinner, worshiping the sun God, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. like which we see right here in first Kings. That right there is the name of the sun god. Like we said, we're not going to speak those, but that's the one also associated with Christmas. But let me show you how exactly this works. Okay. We're going to come over here to Deuteronomy chapter 11, 
And if you would, go ahead and read verse 16. Okay. Take heed to yourselves that your heart be not deceived, and ye turn aside and serve other gods and worship them. All right. So this is repeating what we learned over in the Ten Commandments. Mm -hmm. All right. Go ahead. And then the Lord's wrath be kindled against you, and he shut up the heaven, that there be no rain, and that the land yield not her fruit, unless ye perish quickly from off the good land which the Lord giveth you. So there you go. Mm -hmm. By serving these other gods, you basically take away all of your blessings, mm -hmm. even making it so that you can't grow your own food. Mm -hmm. See how you lose your rain there? Right. And he's shutting up the heavens. That's, mm -hmm. that's your blessings going away. And then he's cutting off the rain so that your crops won't grow. Mm -hmm. And we see that all mentioned over in Leviticus chapter 26. So what it's saying is that the land won't yield its fruit. So now you're dependent on the beast system mm. for your food. Mm. And mm. so that's why they're doing it. Again, mm. that's why you have big holiday celebrations. All of the governments have these celebrations. That's how they survive. That's how they control their people. So what they um, are doing uh, sort of reminds me of when the people said that they did not want the father to be their king anymore. They wanted a king. So it seems like what they're doing is they're shedding off your connection with the father and so now they're king and they're ruler over you just in case you change your mind and want to mm -hmm. go back the other way <laughs> mm -hmm. you you can't do so because mm -hmm. you can't grow food mm -hmm. you know and so you depending on them one way or another right. by having a job down there with them or you know getting their food stamps or something some mm -hmm. kind of way one way or another food boxes some mm -hmm. way or another you're going to be dependent on them so you're going to have to stay attached to the beast system mm -hmm. but let's go on let's look at some more verses in here okay verse 18 therefore shall you lay up these my words in your heart and in your soul and bind them for a sign upon your hand that they may be a frontless between your eyes. So this is talking about the mark of the beast here. Mm -hmm. Well, it's actually talking about the mark of our father. But if you don't have the mark of our father, you have the mark of the beast. Mm -hmm. And so basically these holidays are what's giving you the mark of the beast. You see the connection here? Mm -hmm. But what he's telling us here is to stay focused on these rules. We have to be obedient to these rules. This one in particular that we will serve no other God mm -hmm. unless all of these bad things are going to happen to us. Like it says back up there in 17, we're going to be kicked off of the good land, which is why many of us are here in America in the first place. Mm -hmm. That's what happened to us. Mm -hmm. We you know, forgot about his laws and his rules and we were scattered around right. the world. Right. He did what he said. He said that we would be um, removed from the land. And so we have been. So many of us never even even seen the land before. Right. Let's look at verse 19. And you shall teach them your children, speaking of them when thou sittest in thine house and when thou walkest by the way, when thou liest down and when thou risest up. This is why this is so important to teach our kids this mm -hmm. because they're so much going against them as far as these holidays mm -hmm. you know i was thinking about our personal testimony and when it comes to halloween how when we got here they essentially demonized us because we didn't want our kids celebrating halloween you remember that mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and what ended up happening is one of the neighbor's kids knowing that our kids weren't allowed to keep halloween took a bag of candy and threw it at him. Mm -hmm. You remember that? Mm -hmm. they, there was, they, they came up to him and called him out and said, hey, here you go, and threw a bag of candy mm -hmm. in front of him. Mm -hmm. And that's what left the, I believe, left the biggest impression on our kids who ran up and grabbed that candy. Mm -hmm. But instead of munching on it, they actually threw it back at him. Mm -hmm. And I believe that's what you know hit home to them, that it was you know something that was going on here. But that's what the candy's for. Right. To make sure that the kids are heavily involved with this most sinister of the festivals. This is the one that's taking away our blessings the most because of this time of release that we get during the Feast of Tabernacles. Right. The candy lures the children in. Mm -hmm. Just like the presents and just like the Easter eggs. Mm -hmm. All right. Now let's look at verse 20. And thou shalt write them upon the doorpost of thine house and upon thy gates. Speaking on how important it is 
to always remember these laws. Right. Why it's important to keep the commandments. You know, people, you know, you hear people sometimes say that the Bible is a way of control. Mm. No, actually taking you out of the Bible is a way of controlling you. Separating mm. yourself from these laws is the way of controlling you. Mm. That's the number one way of controlling humanity is to make sure they don't understand these laws and these rules. That's good because by being obedient to the laws, I can say that, and I speak for myself, and hopefully for the rest of the family, that we're more freer now than we ever have been. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we do what we want now. Mm -hmm. Whereas before, locked into the B systems, we had to, I personally had to wake up at four o'clock in the morning, drive 66 miles to try to pay off a quarter million dollars worth of debt, mm -hmm. you know, with no way of, of doing anything for myself or, you know, getting myself out of and, and actually, uh, uh, building anything of my own, all I could really do was build that what my boss was down there trying to build. Mm -hmm. But now it's between me and our father what we do every day. And mm -hmm. we're not tied to the system at all. Right. And I remember when the kids were going to school, how Christian, of course, would tell the children, you know, his classmates, there is no such thing as a Santa Claus. And I... Oh, we as parents got in so much trouble. I mean, I yeah. remember them calling us up there and telling us that we were going to have to tell him to stop telling yeah. these children that. And I was like, do you want me to tell my children to lie, my child to lie? And it was like, well, if you can't tell him to stop, then he's he's going to get in a lot of trouble. Yeah, he's basically, not allowed to tell the children that they're not Santa Claus. Basically threatening and put him out of school right. mm -hmm. if he didn't go along with these pagan holidays which were there to entrap him but that's what the school system is about mm -hmm. you know that's I that's what that. that's what schooling is all that's what education is all about that's why the very first day the very first year you end up down there in kindergarten they have you drawing pictures of jack-o-lanterns and christmas trees and easter eggs and all of that stuff mm -hmm. is to like we said earlier to ingrain this into you as children so that when you grow up you're going to do the same thing for your children yeah, so when those to those who are definitely saying that the laws are falling behind the laws is uh, bondage, then I'm sorry, they don't know what bondage is or do they know what freedom is. Yeah, let's do read a few more of these verses. Verse 21, that your days may be multiplied and the days of your children in the land which the Lord swear unto your fathers to give them. As the days of heaven upon the earth. So these pagan holidays are killing us. Mm -hmm. You see it say that? Mm -hmm, I see it. It says, it, he said, by obeying these laws, your days will be multiplied. That's mm -hmm. why the people in the old times lived so long. Abraham lived to, to be, you know, so many hundreds of years old. But he was even considered a young man compared to his forefathers that lived eight and nine hundred years mm -hmm. of age. Mm -hmm. Well, this is why in the kingdom of heaven. The promises are that people will live longer, too, is because we will be once again honoring the laws and keeping the commandments opposed to following man's laws and keeping man's commandments. 22 says, for if you shall diligently keep all these commandments, which I command you to do them, to love the Lord your God, to walk in all his ways and to cleave unto him. Then will the Lord drive out all these nations from before you, and ye shall possess greater nations and mightier than yourselves. Again, a sense of control. Mm -hmm. They are controlling us. Mm -hmm. See, this is this is this is how we gave away our power. I ain't gonna say they took it away. You see, right here is telling us that nobody can touch us when we're walking in these laws and keeping his commandments, but when we stopped. We gave our power away, allowed ourselves to be kicked out of Jerusalem and then allowed ourselves to be enslaved. Mm -hmm. And even today, you know, living in a slave society, the modern day Egypt. Mm -hmm. Every place where on the soles of your feet shall tread shall be yours from the wilderness and Lebanon, from the river, the river Euphrates, even unto the uttermost sea shall your coast be. This is what the book of Revelation chapter seven and verse nine is talking about that multitude that no man can number. Mm -hmm. These are the people who actually survived the apocalypse and go on to live in the kingdom of heaven like we were just talking about. 
but notice how they have these palm branches in their hands. Mm -hmm. That's what we were doing during the Feast of Tabernacles is walking around rejoicing with these palm branches in our hands. Mm -hmm. This is referring to the holy days, saying that those who keep the holy days will be those who will get to see the kingdom of heaven or get to dwell in the kingdom of heaven. Mm -hmm. All while we saw back over in the other verse that those who keep the holidays and break the commandments, their lives will be shortened. Right. All right, let's go on. There shall no man be able to stand before you. For the Lord your God shall lay the fear of you and the dread of you upon the land that ye shall tread upon, as he has said unto you. Now, this is why they do this. You know, this this kind of reminds me of this ram we have out in the yard. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we just had to put the ram shield back on the ram. Right. Which basically blinds him, takes away his eyesight so that he becomes no threat anymore. Mm -hmm. we, we don't have to worry about him ramming us now because we have essentially blinded him. I mean, he could see out of the corners of his eyes and see where he's going and get his food, but he can't see straight. Mm -mm, he's and, running into things. He can't see where the girls are at. He's just, you know, he's... It's kind of sad. And his defenses are down. Mm -hmm. He's basically having to hang out with the younger sheep and follow behind the, the <laughs> women. It, it, that's, mm -hmm. that's exactly what these pagan holidays do mm -hmm. for Israel. That's what it does for us mm -hmm. is blinds us. Mm -hmm. But we see here, if we ever learn to live within these laws again, and this is, this is what the threat is, then we get our power back. And like it says there, no man will be able to stand before us. Mm -hmm. We get to walk around like Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and the 12 patriarchs. Right. Mm -hmm. Behold, I set before you this day a blessing and a curse. A blessing if ye obey the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command you this day. And a curse if... If you will not obey the commandments of the Lord your God, but turn aside out of the way which I command you this day to go after other gods which ye have not known. There you go. And that rounds it out. All of this that's been said is talking about these other gods. Mm -hmm. This whole section is talking about the worshiping of these other gods. Mm -hmm. So you ask the question, what's wrong with celebrating Halloween? Right. Mm -hmm. Now you know. Right. Is, is basically taking all of your blessings away, mm -hmm. tying you into the beast system. Well, allowing yourself to be under the wrath of the Most High uh, and putting a curse on you. Putting a curse on mm -hmm. you. Yeah, leaving your only option for feeding yourself, mm -hmm. protecting yourself, housing yourself, even having a place to live all together mm -hmm. is dependent on the beast, depending mm -hmm. on Egypt. Mm -hmm. When all you have to do is just not do them. Yeah, there's a boredom. <laughs> you know what I mean? And that's why we don't eat candy on Halloween anymore. Mm -mm. That's why we fast on Christmas and Easter. Mm -hmm. Basically avoiding those days and anything associated with those days altogether. Right. And let me just say this. It wasn't easy for me when we uh, made this transition. It was very hard for me because it was just something I was used, I was used to doing. And I definitely had the pressure of my family which was saying, you know, that's not right for you to do those, do that to those children. You were allowed to have presents and celebrate Christmas and have trick or treat and do Easter egg hunts and all this other stuff. Um, so it was not easy, but we did make the transition and, you know, I'm so glad we did. Yeah. And now instead of getting Christmas gifts once a year, our children get to enjoy the blessings of our father all year long. Mm -hmm. And, you know, while we, because my household was the same, I'm under the same pressures from my side of the family, too. So whereas I had to watch my parents struggle to pay the bills and then struggle to keep food on the table. My, my kids don't they don't have to see that. They don't have to go through that. Because we're living under the blessings of our father now. Right. So and and that's what it's all about. It's all about control. These pagan holidays are taking our control away. Mm -hmm. But before we close out, understanding that, you know, many of the people have the same testimony that they, too, have kept these pagan holidays. Some of them even keeping them this year. Some of them even missing tabernacles. What do they do about it? Well, the answer we can see over here in the book of Revelation, chapter 1 and 5. If you would, go ahead and read that. And from the Messiah, who is the faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead and the prince of the kings of the earth, 
unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. So this is the purpose of the blood. Mm -hmm. That's why we say thank you for the blood. Mm -hmm. Having made this separation, severing our connection with our father is through the Messiah's blood. Can mm -hmm. we actually regain this connection back? So are you talking about communion? Yes, we're talking about communion, like we see over in Matthew chapter 26, but it's also baptism. Okay. Because, you know, communion is in the spring, mm -hmm. but there's some people who could be watching this video with candy stuck in their teeth from <laughs> this Halloween, and they don't want to wait till the spring. Mm -hmm. Well, they can go through this baptism now and then go through communion in the spring so that we can get back into our Father's good graces. And by spring, you're talking about the Feast of Passover. Absolutely. That communion wine, the bread and the wine we do on the Passover evening, along with baptism, gets us the remission of our sins. That ceremony, understanding what it is that we are doing by drinking the wine and eating the bread, counsels out those sins cancels out what it is that we have done in the past. Even these pagan holidays are canceled out. Mm -hmm. Again, that's why we say thank you for the blood. And we also see over here in Revelation chapter 7 and verse 9 that those who will be standing with the multitude that no man can number will be clothed in white robes. Well, it's during the baptism that our robes are made white again. That's the cleansing process right. for our spiritual robes. Mm -hmm. So by now, I hope you understand what's wrong with Halloween and pagan holidays in general. Mm -hmm. If you have any more questions, please feel free to ask. So praise our Father in heaven for his word. And if you got anything out of this video, go ahead and hit the like button. If you didn't, hit the dislike button. But leave us a comment either way. And Shalawama. Shalawama.